Buddha, or Buddha Gautama, also known as Shakyamuni Buddha, was a great spiritual master from ancient India. Born as Prince Siddhartha Gautama in 5th century BC, he would have naturally inherited the vast wealth of a kingdom. However, the prince one day left the palace life in search of spiritual knowledge. After years of contemplative seeking, the Buddha retained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. He then shared the merits of his practice by providing a method for other sentient beings to be freed from the cycle of death and rebirth. The rich treasury of Buddha's spiritual teachings on universal truths are studied and revered to this day for their deep wisdom and compassion. Today we would like to share with you the sage teachings of the Buddha, excerpts of chapter 3 of the Sutra of the Lotus of the Wonderful Dharma, also known as the Lotus Sutra. I tell you, Shariputra, you and the others are all my children, and I am a father to you. For repeated kalpas you have burned in the flames of manifold sufferings. But I will save you all and cause you to escape from the threefold world. Although earlier I told you that you had attained extinction, that was only the end of birth and death. It was not true extinction. Now what is needed is simply that you acquire Buddha wisdom. If there are Bodhisattvas here in this assembly, let them with a single mind listen to the true Dharma of the Buddhas. Though the Buddhas, the world honored ones, employ expedient means, the living beings converted by them are all Bodhisattvas. If there are persons of little wisdom who are deeply attached to love and desire, because they are that way, the Buddha preaches for them the rule of suffering. Then the living beings will be glad in mind, having gained what they never had before. The rule of suffering which the Buddha preaches is true and never varies. If there are living beings who do not understand the root of suffering, who are deeply attached to the causes of suffering and cannot for a moment put them aside, because they are that way, the Buddha uses expedient means to preach the way. As to the cause of all suffering, it has its roots in greed and desire. If greed and desire are wiped out, it will have no place to dwell. To wipe out all suffering, this is called the third rule. For the sake of this rule, the rule of extinction, one practices the way. And when one escapes from the bonds of suffering, this is called attaining emancipation. By what means can a person attain emancipation? Separating oneself from falsehood and delusion, this alone may be called emancipation. But if a person has not truly been able to emancipate himself from everything, then the Buddha will say he has not achieved true extinction, because such a person has not yet gained the unsurpassed way. My purpose is not to try to cause them to reach extinction. I am the Dharma King, free to do as I will with the Dharma. To bring peace and safety to living beings. That is the reason I appear in the world. I say to you, Shariputra, this Dharma seal of mine, I preach because I wish to bring benefit to the world. You must not recklessly transmit it wherever you happen to wander. If there is someone who hears it, responds with joy and gratefully accepts it, you should know that person is a avivatika or non-regressing bodhisattva. If there is someone who believes and accepts the Dharma of the Sutra, that person has already seen the Buddhas of the past, has respectfully offered alms to them and listened to this Dharma. If there is someone who can believe what you preach, then that person has seen me and has also seen you and the other monks and the Bodhisattvas. This Lotus Sutra is preached for those with profound wisdom. If persons of shallow understanding hear it, they will be perplexed and fail to comprehend. As for all the voice hearers and Pratyeka Buddhas or lone Buddhas, in this Sutra there are things that are beyond their powers. 
Even you, Shariputra, in the case of this sutra, were able to gain entrance through faith alone. How much more so then the other voice hearers? Those other voice hearers, it is because they have faith in the Buddha's words that they can comply with this sutra, not because of any wisdom of their own. Also, Shariputra, the persons who are arrogant or lazy or taken up with views of the self do not preach this sutra. Those with the shallow understanding of ordinary persons who are deeply attached to the five desires cannot comprehend it when they hear it. Do not preach it to them. If a person fails to have faith but instead slanders this sutra, immediately he will destroy all the seeds for becoming a Buddha in this world. Or perhaps he will scowl with knitted brows and harbor doubt or perplexity. But if there are those of keen capacities, wise and understanding, of much learning and strong memory, who seek the Buddha way, then to persons such as this it is permissible to preach it. If there are persons who have seen hundreds and thousands and millions of Buddhas, have planted many good roots and are firm and deeply committed in mind, then to persons such as this it is permissible to preach it. If there are persons who are diligent, constantly cultivating a compassionate mind, not begrudging life or limb, then it is permissible to preach it. If there are persons who are respectful, reverent with minds set on nothing else, who separate themselves from common folly to live alone among mountains and waters, then to persons such as this it is permissible to preach it. Again, Shariputra. If you see a person who thrusts aside evil friends and associates with good companions, then to a person such as this it is permissible to preach it. If you see a son of the Buddha observing the precepts, clean and spotless as a pure bright gem, seeking the great vehicle sutra, then to a person such as this it is permissible to preach it. If a person is without anger, upright and gentle in nature, constantly pitying all beings, respectful and reverent to the Buddhas, then to a person such as this it is permissible to preach it. Again, if a son of the Buddha, in the midst of the great assembly, should with a pure mind employ various causes and conditions, similes, parables and other expressions to preach the Dharma in unhindered fashion, to a person such as this it is permissible to preach it. If there are monks who, for the sake of comprehensive wisdom, seek the Dharma in every direction, pressing palms together, gratefully accepting, desiring only to accept and embrace the Sutra of the Great Vehicle, and not accepting a single verse of the other Sutras, to persons such as this it is permissible to preach it. If a person earnest in mind seeks this sutra as though he were seeking the Buddha's relics and having gained and gratefully accepted it, that person shows no intention of seeking other sutras and has never once given thought to the writings of the non-Buddhist doctrines. To a person such as this, it is permissible to preach it. I tell you, Shariputra, if I described all the characteristics of those who seek the Buddha way, I could exhaust a kalpa and never be done. Persons of this type are capable of believing and understanding. Therefore for them you should preach the Lotus Sutra of the wonderful Dharma. Peace-loving viewers, Thank you for joining for today's episode of Between Master and Disciples. Planet Earth, our loving home, is coming up next, right after noteworthy news. So please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. May you and your loved ones be always embraced in the soothing and healing melodies of heaven. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.